it's always exciting for me to be able to share that uh, with the work I do with Off the to the World, especially the Global Save a Challenge. Every trip that I've ever taken, there's always been at least two, three um, Canadians who raise the money to come with us. And what's significant about that, that is that, um, unfortunately, we don't have it set up where Canadians can get tax write-offs, and yet they still raise the money, and they still contribute, and they come together as a community, and they always write us to see how they can get involved. So I want to thank all of you. Probably inspired by the example of Stephen Harper. Um, Stephen Harper, Canada, is just full of compassion and love, environmental awareness. Um, so one thing I wanted to ask you about is that, is often yoga or meditation, uh, spiritual practice is really about, seems to be about navel gazing or about our own happiness. You've um, carried on the proud tradition of flipping that on its head and making yoga and yoga community about uh, service, about sharing the privilege um, we may experience in trying to help others, not in a top-down way, in a very personal way. Um, how did that start for you? I've always been involved with uh, social action since back in the 80s. My interest was as a raising, raising awareness around HIV, AIDS, uh, gay rights, women's rights. Um, I've always been passionate about being a voice for the voiceless, and I think it's because I was raised with a lot of self-confidence to want to communicate and not afraid uh, personally of being oppressed. And so it felt like my right and my duty to be able to get out there and um, either raise awareness or raise money. And I was an ineffective um, activist back in the day because I had a lot of rage. I had a lot of issues around injustice and it came out in the way that I communicated which seemed to perpetuate more separation and um, more indifference in myself and in others. And it was years of yoga and meditation and therapy that allowed me to heal some of my own wounds so that when I did go back to service I went with a way of, of wanting to create engagement and conversation rather than make someone else wrong so that I can be right, I wanted to be committed to the inquiry and seeing if there was a way that we could, even with diversity of opinion, still come to some movement that creates change. So recently on Elephant, we've been sharing this quote by Tolstoy, of all people, saying everyone wants to change the world, but no one wants to first change themselves uh, for the better. Um, so how, how did you... How did you get past you know, that anger, that aggression, and still have um, that emotional inspiration to work so hard? I don't want to suggest that I'm past the anger. I get triggered like that. I just have the tools to deal with the anger when it comes up and to be more mindful about how I want to direct it. Um, it's an ongoing process. I think also my anger is my passion. And I, how can you not be angry with everything that's going on in the world and the level of injustice that's happening environmentally, socially, politically? It's impossible not to feel enraged. Um, but if I'm not working on myself and not committed to recognizing that the rage that exists in the world is simply a manifestation of a collective rage, and I'm part of that collectivity. I've got to work on myself. Where am I creating, um, again, separation? Where am I allowing my anger to motivate a conversation um, or a decision? And that's what needs to be healed simultaneous to doing work. Because if I waited till I was enlightened, if I waited till I was even kind, I'd do nothing. And so it has to happen at the same time. So, um, in the short amount of time we have, how can everyone here, does everyone here know what Sean is doing with the Save a Challenge, Off the Mat, Yoga Boats? How can everyone get involved? Um, well, the newest pro we I just got back from India about two weeks ago. We did a project there. I was there for five weeks. We raised over a million dollars to uh, support organizations that were um, advocating for uh, eradicating uh, sex trafficking. And it was a very intense experience. It was five weeks of conversations around rape and oppression and, and, and abuse that you can't even imagine. The good news is the money went to organizations that were doing it, that are doing incredible work. What I learned in my experience is that the world is really a horrible, messed up, abusive place and there are incredible people working tirelessly every single day to make a difference. And to be able to experience that paradox simultaneously is, is what I take away with me, that it, it's, it's a both, and we need to engage in both conversations, because that's just life. Our newest project is going to be uh, focusing on environmental sustainability in Ecuador, 
we're going to be learning more about uh, the, the deforestation, the crisis with oil and the impact that it has, not only on the environment, but the health of the indigenous people, and our contribution to that injustice uh, as, a, as a nation in North America. And so um, if you want to get involved, you, the, how it works is you've raised $20,000. You've got to go into your community to do it. You can't pay for it. You've got to raise it. And if you can, you get to come with me to Ecuador for two weeks and actually see where the money is being spent, the different organizations that we're working for. It's a private trip. It's just going to be you and Sean the whole time. <laughs> we take up to 20 people at a time. That's why I was in India for, for uh, five weeks, because we took two groups of 20 people. And uh, we like to keep it small so it's, it's sustainable for the people that we're working with and for the environment. So in this interview uh, that we did something like eight years ago now, um, you told this powerful story of the beginning of your journey and how you thought you were going to go help these, I think, severely sexually abused um, adolescents, um, young, young women, I think. Um, and you thought you were going to go help because you were this sort of wise yoga teacher and you got there and you realized that it was them showing you your fear and where you were stuck. And it was, um, you know, it's, when I say it, it sounds sort of trite, but it was very inspiring for me to read because obviously, um, or maybe not obviously, we're not helping, we're not, we're, um, we're being helped just as much, so. It's an, it's an exchange. When people will often acknowledge the, the service that I do as being selfless, and I have a, I'm have very uncomfortable with that statement because there's nothing selfless about anything that I've ever done, and quite frankly, there will never be enough money or food or time that I can contribute that would ever pay back the amount of transformation that's occurred that the people that I've worked with have given me for the privilege of being a part of their experience. They've mirrored back to me um, my both my shadow and levels of compassion, empathy, and light that I didn't know existed within my cellular body. And I will forevermore be grateful. That's, to me, where the real yoga has been. I see my assumptions, my prejudice, my sexism, my racism, all of it comes up and I get to heal that. And I can't do that unless I'm in the presence of trauma or oppression of some capacity. They serve me and I'm grateful for it. And if there's something that I can do to pay back that exchange, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Well, um, one of uh, my idols who I've read a lot about, Eleanor Roosevelt, said that she was miserable in her own life until she uh, discovered serving others, and that was the first time she was happy, so that's all she ever did. So it is selfish in the best possible sense. Um, there, and maybe we could close with the Buddhist quote, which is, uh, if you want to be happy, think first of others. You can obviously think about yourself as well, but if you want to be happy, think first of others. Our ego says, if you want to be happy, think only of yourself. So, Sean Corn, thank you very much. Wayland, thank you. Thank you, everyone.